if you live in a part of the world where it's extremely dark and overcast or the weather won't let you outside or you live in a cave or some other small box that does not allow any natural light into it for whatever reason, well, then you're going to need a replacement for that sunlight. And there are sunlight simulators or daylight simulators that you can purchase. Those are quite expensive in general. And therefore, I suggest cheaper options that work just as well because they get just as bright. Things like ring lights that are sold in order for people to take selfies and this kind of thing. A drawing LED tablet will work pretty well. I actually have one of those and I put it on my desk all morning, even though I still get outside and look at sunlight first thing in the morning. Again, also, especially I should say on cloudy days. We do not have any affiliation to any ring lights or LED lights or these panels. So we will provide a link to a couple of different options if you want to explore the various options. I don't know what people's different budgets are. I don't know where people live. I just know that many of our listeners live in locations throughout the world where, for instance, during the winter, it gets very, very dark, so they can't get sufficient sunlight. But get that morning light, ideally from sunlight, and take into account all the specific points that I've given you here. And I should say, enjoy this practice. It's really nice to get outside first thing in the morning and get the sunlight. In fact, when you start doing this, you'll notice that your body will start to feel more energized and it will feel more energized more quickly. You'll actually start to notice this mechanism kicking in each day, especially if you're paying attention to your physiology. So enjoy this practice of getting outside. Yes, you can take your morning beverage outside. Yes, you can take your dog with you. In fact, Animals intuitively know to get this morning sunlight. They actually seek it out at the right times of days. We human beings need to be told by podcasters and other people about the science that supports these kinds of practices. Our pets apparently do not, but get outside alone or with somebody, with your kids, with your dog. However you go about this practice, make sure you do this practice at least 80% of the days of your life. That's right. If you miss a day, for instance, you're bedridden for a day, try and get next to a window. Let's say you are traveling or for whatever reason, you are not able to get outside first thing in the morning. Well, then try to get twice as much sunlight in your eyes, or I should say, extend the duration of sunlight viewing in the morning for twice as long the following day. This is a slow integrative mechanism that underlies this whole thing of wakefulness during the day and sleep at night due to sunlight viewing. And if you miss a day, you can make up for it the next day, but you have to get twice as much light or twice as much duration of light. If you really want to get technical and you really want to measure how much light is in your environment, you can download a free app, something like Light Meter, and that will allow your phone to act as a bit of a light meter. It give you a pretty accurate measurement of how many lux, which is a measure of brightness, are in your environment in the morning. And in general, that's just going to be a good tool for evaluating your environments. Here's what I suggest you do. Wake up in the morning, take light meter, point at the brightest light in your home and take a measurement. And what you'll probably find is it's about a thousand lux. Now go outside. And if there's some sunlight out and there's cloud cover, point it at the sky and press that button. You can actually hold it down and it'll give you a dynamically updated uh, lux measurement. And what you'll find is like 5,000, 10,000, sometimes even 90,000 lux, even though you don't experience it as so much brighter. And that's because an indoor artificial light is very concentrated over a, a small spatial area, whereas the sunlight is very diffuse. But it's that diffuse, very bright sunlight, that photon energy that you really want that's going to set all the rhythms of your brain and body in the proper way. Not just that cortisol peak, but it's going to trigger proper metabolism. It's going to set a timer for you to be able to fall asleep about 16 hours later and on and on and on. And I should mention within the on and on and on, it's also going to suppress any melatonin, a hormone that makes you sleepy that happens to be swimming around in your bloodstream at the time you wake up. It does a number of other things too, including interact with the adenosine system and kind of wash out some of the adenosine that might still be residual if you didn't sleep enough. Fundamentally speaking, get that morning sunlight viewing. I promise you will Be grateful that you did. It makes everybody feel better, feel more alert, and it will greatly assist with your ability to fall and stay asleep later that night. 